Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at some news articles for the week beginning of the 14th of August 2022. These are interesting news articles that I've picked out looking at BBC News, links to which down in the description. And they're just interesting and they've got some link to computer science and IT, so we'll have a look at them now. So the first thing is ransomware is back. Ransomware is back. At the NHS, unfortunately. So we remember four or five years ago, it was particularly nasty. It did a lot of damage, caused a huge amount of problems. It's now back in advanced, which provides digital services like patient check-ins and NHS 111. And it's been confirmed that it's now back. So if you're not unaware of what ransomware is, it's a version of malware, it's a malware which is particularly unpleasant, what it does is it locks you out of your files. So the way it will get onto your computer is you'll download some free software or you'll download an attachment, you'll open an attachment and the, the virus will get onto your computer that way. Once it's on your computer, it will then look around your computer for specific files. So the hackers will look around for specific files, look at what you've got on your computer the hackers might take copies of your files then they'll lock you out of your files and what will happen is the only way to gain access to your files is if you pay a ransom so any way to get access to your computer or your files is by paying a ransom which will be usually in bitcoin so perhaps five hundred dollars in bitcoin if you fail to pay that you won't gain access to your files, so you're locked out. So they hold your files to ransom, they hold your computer to ransom. The only way for you to get access to that, to get that back, is by paying this ransom. Hence name, ransomware. Now it looks like this firm has got this in control. They probably backed their files up, so it's working on restoring services. But regardless of having files backed up, which is a really good thing, as I always say, prevention is better than better than a cure in this place. So prevention would be you've got your files backed up either via the cloud or via perhaps external drive. So if you do become victim to ransomware, you don't need to comply to the ransom demands. You've got your files backed up, but it does cause a huge amount of problems in that the files need to be backed up. And who knows, we've been poking around in private data looking at uh, very sensitive, highly sensitive data. These hackers have been in, in there looking at what there is there. So prevention is better than cure, but it, even then it's still gonna take some time to restore services. So the firms first spotted the hack on the 4th of August and took steps to contain the hackers. It's now working on restoring the services. So it could take several weeks to get back to normal. So it's a huge problem. The only way around that is to pay the ransom or if you manage to back up your files, you just need to restore them. But again, back with the NHS, the NHS team seems a particularly easy target for them. They know there'll be sensitive data there. They'll know that the NHS will need that data. So they seem to want to target it quite a lot. So over to China now, and we're thinking about privacy. We're thinking about big brands like Alibaba, who own AliExpress. Probably everyone's got the AliExpress app. It's so easy to buy things from China directly from the manufacturers. You wait a few weeks and they arrive. TikTok owner ByteDance and Tencent Gaming. So some massive, massive companies there that have working with the government of China now to provide data. So that data has been shared with Chinese regulators for the first time. And this is important because obviously TikTok is absolutely massive. Some of you who follow the channel will know I, I do have a presence on TikTok. I don't upload stuff very often. I think I haven't uploaded stuff in two years. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I understand it is very, very popular. So think about the amount of data that's on there. Some of, the, some of these videos have millions and millions of likes, and that is that is very important data. That is very, very useful data. And that's now being shared with Chinese regulators. 
Uh, it seems to me that the Chinese government under Xi Jinping have become much more kind of author authoritarian over some of these private enterprises. They've been interested in what they're in doing and taking much greater interest and less kind of a laissez-faire attitude, more kind of wanting to control what's happening in the private sector. If you understand Chinese politics, China is a communist country and so it doesn't always mix well the values of the communist country with capitalist values of these big companies. So they've been taking more of an interest in what goes on now and more of a crackdown on certain things and more of an interest in the data that's being produced. So if you are a user of TikTok, you might want to think about where that data is actually going and what the privacy issues actually are on like these kind of apps. Also, on the subject of privacy, we're now looking at WhatsApp. WhatsApp is owned by Meta. Meta is the American group that own Facebook and Instagram. So they change things. They've now added a feature where users of or members of a group can now leave silently. So it might in the past it might have been awkward where if someone left a group, it might have caused a few issues. People might have got offended if someone left the group. Now when people use a certain feature and they have to actually specify they want to use this feature. When they use this feature, they can leave the group quietly and silently with only the administrators being notified. So a very positive feature, I think, a very positive development because it can avoid some of those awkward conversations of people leaving the group. But as someone said from the Alan Turing Institute, it's nice to give users more control. Yeah, agree with that. But unless users were prompted to use the features or made aware of them, the impact could be limited. So again, if the users are aware of this feature or don't know it's there, don't know how to use it, then it's not really much use. So it's only useful if users can actually use it and, and are able to use that and, and aware of it in the first place. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and links to all these articles down in the description. Bye bye.